Hi, honey, how are you? It's Technicolor. Today, I have another speed build. This time, it is my week two submission for The Builder Games Season 5, which is a world tour. This one is inspired by Cape Town, South Africa, and I made a Cape Dutch architectural style family home. Let's get into it. If you're unfamiliar with The Builder Games, this is a The Sims 4 building competition, and it has two travel guides, 15 judges and 30 contestants and we're on week two so currently five contestants have already been eliminated and i made it through to week two so this is actually rather exciting this season there are going to be six different locations that we'll be visiting as part of this world tour i really want to get through all of them but i don't even know if i'm making it to week three i guess you can be the judge based on this speed build but the focus of this is for us to learn a little bit more about the cultures and the building styles that are featured in these locations that we'll be visiting and to push us out of our boundaries and i have to say week one definitely did that and even though i spent more time on week two this build that we're currently watching i think that this one was probably my favorite i feel like i excel more at residential builds so i felt really in my element with this one so if you didn't watch last week's video which was my week one submission i'll let you know a little bit more about the rules for this season so we aren't allowed to use previously done builds so none of these are from a shell we're building each of these from scratch we can't use custom content we aren't allowed to build outside of the challenge prompt for each week, and we're not allowed to plagiarize, obviously. However, we can use any pack. We can use CC free art. We can use the tool mod, better build by, debug, live edit, and other game cheats like BB Move Objects. And each of our builds are being judged by those 15 judges. And there is a point-based system. The maximum score that we can receive Per judge is five points. We get three points for challenge accuracy, one point for visual appeal, and one point for uniqueness. On top of that, judges can award three extra points per challenge. These three extra points are up to each judge's discretion. They can be given out to one builder or spread out amongst three different builders. You also might be wondering, but there are other elements that come into each person's build and submission that don't really have any effect on the judging. So outside photo editing is not included in the judging, which is good because if somebody is not necessarily a great photo editor, then they're not going to lose points on that. Judges aren't to consider any shading presets in any of the builds, and that's good because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and use of the tool mod. Even though the tool mod is technically allowed, it's not required, and it's not something that you will be judged on because not everyone is great at using the tool mod like for instance i'm getting better at using the tool mod but i'm not very good at it it takes me a long time which you'll definitely see in this build if you didn't see last week's video i'll definitely link it down below but that one the challenge was brazil sao paulo and i did the masp which is an art museum and I think it came out really well, especially because we did get pushed through to week two. If you're interested, I scored a 44 on last week's submission. And for those of us who were pushed through to week two, the ratings ranged from 39 points to 55. For this week's challenge, we landed in Cape Town, South Africa, and we had two prompts that we could choose from. At the dinner table, which is the one that I chose, or tip top tours. For the prompt that I chose at the dinner table, the focus was meant to be on food and specifically the room that you would be consuming the food. Let me read a little bit about what this prompt specifically said. In South Africa, food is a very important part of heritage and traditions, no matter the culture or religion. It is used to celebrate, 
mourn, and communicate with higher powers. Today, you will be making a dinner slash living space that is inspired by South African decor, design, and culture. The size of the build is up to us, though we weren't allowed to exceed any 50 by 40 lots. And of course, the judges will take the whole build into account in their judging. So that's interior, exterior, and landscaping. I decided that I was going to build in Tartosa because I thought it would look as similar to South Africa as I could based on the worlds that I have in the game. I definitely looked at a lot of the items that were in the game in debug and just general items and tried to find something that would match the swooping clock gables and that is that swoopiness that you'll see in a lot of the buildings that are in that area so i had looked at a ton of items and i couldn't see anything that i could do to replicate this architectural style so i was starting to freak out <laughs> And then I actually remembered that we have beds and I hoped that they came in something that was kind of like a basic white and they did. So I'm actually using a bed or three in the roof. <laughs> and it took me a while to figure out the best way to hide them in the roof because obviously I didn't want to see any of like the bedspread. I wanted to see roof and just the headboard essentially. And I think I came up with something that worked well. There's also this weird architectural piece, I guess, that would go on some sort of debug building. And that I used on three of the sides of this building. And I think that helped distinguish it. So it looked less like there was a bed in the roof. <laughs> you can sometimes see the actual feet or the legs of the bed, at least on the headboard side. But I also tried to use columns and some other pieces to make it look a little more hidden. And I think I did a pretty good job there because I was actually talking with another one of the contestants and they asked me how I did it. And I was like, I legit hid a bed in the roof. <laughs> I was also using a couple of different inspiration pictures and one of them had these windows and I was so frustrated, like legitimately frustrated because there's windows that we have in the game and they're, they're from the mosquito pack. <laughs> but all of the windows that we have that sort of match have kind of like the white woodwork or the border of them and then the black like window pane and I wanted the opposite because that's what is on the actual build. Unfortunately, I couldn't get anything to match. So I ended up using that style that we do have in the game. And I ended up using the horse ranch windows, which I was kind of surprised by because I didn't think that horse ranch would match this. I'm also using what, if I'm remembering correctly, is a base game door, but it looks so much like the actual door. By the end of the video, you'll see that I felt a little uncomfortable because this is the entryway and I felt like it should be a little more grand and there were no windows. It was just the door and I felt like it wasn't working. So I ended up using some of the windows from For Rent and that I think made it look a little more classy. It made it look a little bit more upscale, which is kind of what I was going for. And once I was able to do that, I was so happy. I was also very offended. <laughs> because the the inspiration image that I got a lot of the exterior from it had this I guess porch but the fencing that I wanted to use would be too high up and it would cover a lot of the building so I kind of had to fake the porch and actually in this case I made it more of like an area that you could go into I feel like the judges aren't going to like that because there's not much room to walk and it's a little odd, but I don't know. I felt like it worked in the end for what I envisioned the build to look like. And I definitely didn't want it to be on that foundation because it just wouldn't look right. I also knew that given that this prompt is at the dinner table, I needed the dining room to be the core focus of the build. 
I'm also Italian and the kitchen comes into play a lot in my family. So I needed to make sure that the kitchen also was highlighted in some sort of way. And I feel like generally a lot of people just spend a lot of that living time that's not eating or cooking in a living room. I wanted to make sure that that was highlighted as well. And it took me an exceptional amount of time to figure out what the floor plan should be because it's not a huge building and I didn't want it to be huge. I went way too big on week one. <laughs> Granted, it's based off an actual building and it was a lot to do. It was, it was a huge build. However, I wanted this one to be scaled down because I felt like based on some of the critiques that I had received from the judges, I felt like they said that I didn't put in enough details and they wanted to see more landscaping. And while I understood that critique for that build, that specific museum really didn't have that much landscaping, at least in the parts that I kept in. And... I've never felt very comfortable with landscaping. I, I feel like that's probably where I'm the least confident in my builds. So I kind of cringed when I read that feedback because I was so afraid that that was one of the critiques that I would receive. But I love greenery. I love using greenery and plants and anything that I can do to make any build that I that I make look more lived in. And I knew that I needed to do that in this build. So you'll see by the end, I used a lot of plants, I used a lot of greenery, and I focused on the landscaping a ton. I don't necessarily know that it's exactly what the judges are looking for, but I hope that it will be something that they appreciate that I spent time on. I think it's as close as we can get to South Africa in the game because obviously we don't have a South African inspired world. A lot of the worlds in The Sims 4 are very North American and I would love to see a little more variety from The Sims team. So I, I tried to do as much as I could. So I ended up using a lot of For Rent, a lot of Island Living, a lot of My Wedding Stories. So we'll see, we'll see if it fits. I thought that it felt like the build fit into the world very well, especially by the end. I love, I love some of the exterior shots that I got and the interior shots. Oh my God. I'm going to be showing those also on my Instagram page if you're interested. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm just so thrilled with this build. I think that this might be one of the best builds that I've ever done in The Sims 4. But essentially, once you come up to the front of the house and you enter the front door, that entryway looks directly into the dining room. Like there's no missing the point of this home. And that home is that there is a focus on family and friends and dining and food specifically. So I knew that that needed to be a core focus, but I also wanted the kitchen to be very close and I needed it to be something that felt realistic for a dining centered build, if that made sense. I also knew that based on the window positioning that is for the entire build, I knew that I didn't really want windows on the sides and I thought it was going to look very weird. I ended up coming up with something that sort of hides the fact that there's no windows on the sides. And I think it looks realistic. I also added another dining space that's on the outside and another area where you can maybe enjoy your morning coffee or sit with a friend and just, I don't know, read a book, anything like that. I felt like there was two spaces that were an extension of the home and I felt like that fit in to the sides better than anywhere else. But because there's no windows on the sides of the building, I needed to make sure that this building was draped in light. I needed it to be something that at nighttime, you still wanted to be there. You would be in the dining room, maybe still chatting with family or friends, enjoying the food. Maybe you're at dessert by now. And you know when you're with your loved ones, 
and you don't really want to leave. Like you don't really want it to end because everyone's just enjoying it. You might be exhausted, but it just feels like you don't really want that moment to end. I wanted this room to show that feeling. I wanted that described by the look and the feel of this room. And having the dining room in that spot. I also knew that I wanted a lot of storage space and just space in general for entertaining items like serveware, but also for the food itself. So there's two buffets and there's two kind of like hutches that you can store serveware in. There's a whole wine rack area and then space on top of that. There's also another table that's in the hallway to the kitchen. It also kind of acts as like a landing space, but again, it's another table that you could use to add more dining space. Maybe that's for if there's more people there and maybe that's the kids table or something. I will say, even though I love the dining room in this build, I feel like the kitchen is probably my favorite space in the entire build. And the reason for that is in my family, I feel like the kitchen is kind of, I don't know. I don't know if other families have this, but for me, the kitchen is kind of like a huge hub. And I feel like while the dining room is that hub for this build specifically, I kind of wanted a nod to my own family and my own experiences in this build. And that's the kitchen. The kitchen is definitely a space where I think a lot of people would congregate. There's no seating in the kitchen, which I think is kind of typical. Like for instance, my aunt's kitchen probably has two stools in there. And my own parents, there's the like kitchen table, but it's a little bit further away from the actual kitchen, if that makes sense. And I feel like people are just standing and talking, especially with the person who's actually preparing all of the food. It just, it's just a space where I feel like a lot of people are congregating and people are just spending a lot of time there. Maybe they're helping prepare. Maybe they're just chatting. Maybe they're enjoying a cup of coffee. I, I don't know. I just wanted to make sure that that part of my own experience was being portrayed in this as well. And again, I'm not South African. So maybe that's something that is a worldwide experience, or maybe that's something that would also relate to people in South Africa, but I, I don't know. I needed a nod to my own family in there. <laughs> and the kitchen feels like that space for me. I decided not to include an oven. I decided to use one of the fireplaces as the oven, kind of like a, like a brick oven sort of thing that's sort of like built into the house itself. I wanted it to look as if that's kind of the heart of the kitchen. I felt the way that I designed the kitchen, I felt like that made sense. And I have an older looking fridge. I do have a microwave. I also tried to look up what is realistic for South Africa. Like for instance, I'm in New York City and I don't know if you could see, but there's an air conditioner here right above a radiator. I actually also have my window open because even though it's the winter, it's hot as hell in here. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that the equipment or the appliances that were in this kitchen were typical to South Africa. And that's why certain ones are excluded other than the oven and certain ones are included, if that makes sense. I will also say I recently got the werewolves pack. And there's a desk in there that one of my friends uses in their legacy home. And I'm like, this desk is beautiful. I wanna use it in a kitchen because it feels very much like an item that would be in a kitchen, at least in my opinion. And I knew that it had to be in this kitchen. And I knew that I wanted to have that journal. I feel like I use this item all the time. I think it's really pretty, but it's this like written in journal. And I think it really looks realistic for somebody who's maybe handwriting recipes or maybe they're they're preparing the food. They're trying to figure out like what would work best for this specific party. And I knew that that kitchen needed that, but I still wanted there to be kind of like a cookbook stand. And then I remembered, wait a minute, don't we have an item like that now? Like, isn't there an item in the game didn't it come in for rent or something that there's a cookbook 
like on a cookbook stand like isn't that something that exists and i couldn't find it anywhere and i'm like i feel like i have all the newer things and then i reached out to one of my friends who also plays the sims and they were like oh i think that's home chef hustle and that i didn't have it <laughs> i have never added something to my cart so quickly i was like i need it for this build <laughs> And I wanted Home Chef Hustle for such a long time, but I really wanted to wait for it to go on sale. But I needed it. I needed it. I needed it right then and right there. And I think it works. So we use that cookbook item and I use a lot of the other items that I think make the kitchen look a little bit more lively, a little more lived in. And I don't know. Shout out to Home Chef Hustle because that that really saved us there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we really needed that cookbook stand item. So in the hallway to the kitchen and the living room, there's this little nook that's right in front of the living room entryway. But there's there's this little nook and I have a table that is from for rent. It's it's just like an accent table and I lifted another flower or plant from that same pack up to be on top of it. And then there's a mirror that is from growing together. And then I think it's also from Island Living. There's like another big flower planter thing. I don't know. I felt like it really came together. It looked really, really nice. And I don't know. I feel like I'm going to end up trying to recreate that in some of my other builds. I feel like it just came out really nicely. And I don't usually build hallways. And even if I do, I feel like I don't really know how to decorate them. For some reason, the little like bump outs that I have next to the dining room. I feel like I really excelled there. So I, I was really proud of that. I also spent a lot of time trying to make those like exposed wood beams for this. And a friend of mine had actually suggested, uh, he's actually in this, this competition. He had suggested using spandrels that basically go across the entire wall. And I did start out doing that. You can kind of see in the speed build, but I, I felt like they just didn't look great because the way that they connected with the walls i don't know it looked like i was using spandrels and i really didn't want that but i know that there's an item in cottage living that is kind of like a tile wide and yes i basically put that in the entire build on every single tile and then i raised it up one by one i actually have an elgato stream deck and i pushed a button on my stream deck that would essentially lift each piece up to the correct height and then I would just have to like click and then I realized that I didn't actually like it to be like fully crisscrossed the entire build so then I deleted a lot of it and then I just got really annoyed having to wait for it to the right height so then I just ended up doing it myself <laughs> but I don't know I feel like it looks really good and I feel like it puts there's like an edge to the build if that makes sense I feel like it put it a little over what it could have been it looks a little more realistic now and i feel like it looks less weird that the ceilings aren't painted i always forget to paint my ceilings and build i know that we got ceiling paint and everyone seems to love it i have it in my current legacy family house but i don't really know what to do <laughs> i feel like some floorings look weird on the ceiling so i don't really know what I'm supposed to. And I feel like other people's builds, when they do use ceiling paint, it looks so good. It looks really nice. In my case, I feel like it really doesn't. <laughs> so the fact that I didn't build the ceilings in this time, I feel like it looks less obvious because I'm using those like spandrels or the, the exposed wood beams. The part that I really liked about having the dining room in the center though is the fact that those hallways act as branches off from the heart of the build, which is the dining room. And I felt like having those spaces act the way that they do. If you're looking from the front door on the left-hand side, it's inset. And there's also those new like window pieces that we have from the front pack that act as a sort of visual look-in to the kitchen. And then there's just like, open entryways to the to the kitchen itself and then to to the living room and on the other side that inset has two doors to each of the bedrooms and then there's the wine racks and then there's shelves on top of that with 
extra items that you might have. Like there's napkins, there's salt and pepper, there's lemons or oranges. There's, there's all these items that you would find in a kitchen or a dining room. And it feels like it just sort of realistically makes sense. I, I ended up being really proud of those two specific spaces, even though they're not necessarily like the big part of this build. I felt like I needed to make something that felt like it fit in to the entire build with each space because I felt like if I just focused on the on the dining room and then the kitchen it wouldn't really work as a whole building like you need all of the pieces to come together and act as one it looks like there's one family living here do you know what I mean it doesn't look like I just focused on a dining room and a kitchen and then kind of really forgot about the other places. I felt like it was important to spend as much time and care on each of the rooms. I really enjoy building bedrooms, but I, I don't always know exactly what else to add in as clutter. So sometimes I'm not really sure if my builds look kind of like more, not base game, but kind of just like kind of basic, like anyone could really live there. And I didn't want that to be the case for this. So I felt like the primary bedroom, I feel like it looks like somebody lives there. I felt like I used a lot of the colors that are used in the main area of the house, but I also wanted to use colors that felt like this is the person who owns the house. Like this is their home. And the, the bedroom needed to reflect that. So it needed to be the most like the rest of the house because obviously this would be the color palette that they personally enjoy and i felt like i used a lot of reds and oranges in the rest of the build which was intentional so i used a lot of that here as well and then obviously that pop of green that you see in all of the greenery the other bedroom is kind of meant for a teenager or at least that's kind of the vibe that i got when i was building it i felt like this space felt like it was something that was specific for a teenager or maybe a little bit older than a teenager. I also left, which was intentional. I hope the judges don't think that it was unintentional, like a mistake that I was like originally building a children's room and left this one item in. Cause I do kind of hide it behind some plants, but there's like a height chart and it's a giraffe, which felt kind of realistic for South Africa. I added that height chart and I wanted it to be there because like this was the kids room, but now they've grown up. Now they're a teenager or maybe like in their 20s. Um, so now obviously like the things that they want in their room has grown with them. So I have a trunk with like, I feel like a lot of the items are from high school years. So I, I felt like there's this, I don't know, like you're seeing the growth of the person that lives in this room. Like, yeah, they live in this house, so it's their house, but they're younger. Like they're still growing. They're coming into their own. So you're you're kind of seeing that in their furniture items. So maybe they've had some of the items since they were younger, or maybe all of it's kind of newer, but it's like tailor-made for them specifically. So a lot of it is like teals. That's kind of like the vibe that I was going for. And a lot of gold, which I felt like that would fit in to the actual house itself so it wouldn't look like it was odd that it would fit in there like sometimes i feel like at least like as a millennial even though i don't age past 23 that's kind of like my whole thing 23 is just my favorite number i feel like i don't know people in my age group like our colors of our bedrooms were like wild like mine was like kind of like lime green my bedroom and i thought it was like the height the height of design. One of my friends, her bedroom was like this weird purple and all of it was like kind of like neon colors. Like it was like weird, but I don't know. I felt like this, it feels very intentional for this sim. It feels as if it is very, I don't know. Like it, it fits them, if that makes sense. Now that I'm putting the finishing touches on the build, why don't we pop into the game and I can show you an actual tour of the entire build because I know speed builds, everything's kind of like zipping around. It's a little harder to see exactly what's going on. And then after that, I'll show a couple of photos that basically just showcase the entire build and like how I staged it for the judges. So when you first come through the front door, this is what you see. There's a space to kick off your shoes or maybe put on your shoes if you're leaving for the day. In this room is one of the bathrooms. This is for the entire family. Coming back out, of course, you can see there's this expansive table. There's the buffets for all of the food. 
there's these two hutches. There's that area for a whole bunch of wine and other serveware. Over here is two entryways, so you can see that there is space to go to the living room or space to go into the kitchen. I love that there's a space for this chalkboard because it kind of reminds me of my grandfather's house. Same thing with the, the oversized spoon and fork item. I think I would die for this kitchen. I put these mugs here to kind of look like there's, there's people who are living here and not putting it in the sink and definitely not cleaning it. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like we can all, we can all relate to that. Here's the desk that I was telling you about. And then that cookbook item going back out, you can then see here is the living space. I felt like I tried to pull in a lot of cooking related books. Obviously there's a TV, a fireplace for when the nights get colder and the artwork and the photos I felt like fit in with something that would be in South Africa. Then going into these two spaces, here is the teens room. There's that giraffe the height chart that I was telling you about. I really love the colors in here and I felt like it realistically looks like it would be a teens room. In here is the primary bedroom. And I have to say, having this vanity here, I think it's technically a vanity item, but it's not necessarily an item that you can sit and put your makeup on in game. I know that there's a few items that do have that. If you look in some of my previous YouTube videos, I did a townhouses build and I used this item there. That gave me the idea to use in my own legacy family house and i basically just recreated that here it looks a little bit different then of course we have the bed and we have this whole area here it's kind of like a place to like put all of their junk or whatever in here of course is the primary bathroom and i feel like it it looks different from everywhere else in the house but i felt like that was important it kind of it felt like there needed to be a space that was a little more modern and definitely cooler and i felt like the bathroom needed those colors specifically on this side there's actually an entirely other dining space and i think at night it looks really beautiful there's also this area over here which is kind of like a like a morning place for me. I feel like this is probably where you might have your morning coffee. Also, this is what I mean about this spot at night. I feel like it looks beautiful. This is the entire speed build. I'm actually going to pop in a bunch of photos right now that were part of my submission so you can kind of see my vision for the entire build and for the submission as a whole. But if you like content like this, like Sims builds, be sure to like and subscribe over here on YouTube. But also if you're interested, I stream pretty much every single day over on Twitch, except for Wednesdays and Sundays. And two of those days are The Sims. Right now I am playing with my legacy family. So we do that pretty much every Tuesday and Thursday morning, at least in Eastern time, since I'm located in New York. My name is basically the same as it is here. It's just twitch.tv forward slash technicolor. So I hope to see you soon, either in my Twitch chat or in the next video. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.